What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Above Bar Goal Show. Today's guest is Isabel Delet, uh, L.E.T. player. How are you doing, Isabel? You okay? Doing well. It's raining back home here, but everything is good. Thank you. How are you? <laughs> I'm good, thank you. Yeah, we've got the same. We've had our got a week of sun in England now. We've got thunderstorms and and rain as well, so pretty much the same. So oh, yeah. But, uh, so you said you're back at home then. So you're you're from Stockholm. So you're back there for now. That's right. I'm from Stockholm, and I'm based and living here now. Uh, before I used to live in Spain. Uh, during winter but now I just moved back home and going from here to the tournament so I'm loving it it's different I haven't been home in many years so yeah yes yeah, not a bad not a bad place to live either I've been to Stockholm once before it's a beautiful city ah uh, yeah no I, I understand it's it's the best that's what I say <laughs> definitely so tell us a little bit about yourself then growing up obviously you just said you're from Stockholm so uh, what sort of age, you know, did you get into golf? Were you in Stockholm still when you started playing golf? Give us your your bit of a backstory. Yeah, so I'm born here, and uh, my mother she's uh, from Peru, and my father is from Sweden, and they met here, and then ever since I was little, my dad is my uh, my teacher, um, so he kind of raised me on the golf course, me and my brother, and that's. I watched my brother play golf growing up and then I just got stuck to it. And ever since I was three years old, I got my first golf clubs and uh, picked up golf from there. I did multiple sports growing up. So um, just like gymnastics, dance, uh, tennis, swimming, you name it. And then oh. once I turned like 12, I realized like, okay, I'm pretty good at this. <laughs> and then the Swedish national team picked me up and I got to go to camps and stuff. And then Annika Sörenstam had a lot of camps for junior golfers. So okay. I, I was a part of that. And she was a huge, huge inspiration for me. So ever since then, I just continued with golf. And by the age of 15, I completely decided, like, I'm going to go for golf. And then after that... Um, I got recruited to Oklahoma State University mm -hmm. and my plan wasn't to study at all I just wanted to turn pro once I finished high school mm -hmm. but then I went there and then got stuck for four and a half years and I finished with two degrees and then came back and did Q school for a uh, ladies European tour nice so, yeah and I read that your your dad was a professional golfer correct and then I think your That's brother's right. also a yeah. professional hockey player as well. So obviously, obviously quite an athletic yeah. family. Yeah, that's right. Now, so my dad, he injured his back and then he started working more into like mental, um, the mental part of golf and has okay. been teaching a lot of that. So I've been growing up with that since a young age, just working mentally. Mm -hmm. uh, and then my brother, yeah, as you said, he plays hockey and that's what he does for a living still uh, here in the Swedish league. And uh, no, so, I mean, my brother has been a huge inspiration for me, um, whether it's been on the golf course or outside. And uh, I think that's where it's like, it's, I'm in that environment. So sure. it's been quite easy choice to be like, OK, I want to play golf, too. So oh, yeah. we've, I mean, you mentioned you had quite a few different sports though that you enjoyed and that you were good at. So did your dad kind of push you both towards golf or was he kind of just letting you choose whatever you were happiest doing? That's quite interesting. No, he didn't push me for anything more than like, do whatever you want as much as you want and you decide what you want to do. So he never really pushed for golf only. He was mm -hmm. just like, here, you got some clubs, you do whatever you like with them and I mean, I loved it, but I mean, yeah. it's, it's easier when you have someone like I had a coach there with me the entire time. So I got a feedback every time I went to practice or so, and he would, I mean, be around me all the time. So mm -hmm. naturally that came through me, but no, he didn't push me for golf. I would say. So, so, so it, it was pretty happened. clear to you that, that that was always going to be the sport, not only because you were so good at it, but did you always feel like it was the one that you enjoyed the most or, or not really? 
Uh, no, when I when I was little, I enjoyed like everything that was pink and glitter and stuff <laughs> like that. So ice skating was my dream. And then I went into dancing, ballet and all of that. And then all of a sudden when I was turned 12, I became a little more like, okay, I like the rough, more type of rough sports. And then mm -hmm. slowly grew into like golf and I enjoyed being around the guys on the golf course and I started beating them. Yeah. It turned out like, this is fun. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> kind of grew, grew inside me there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And how was the, how was the experience then going to college and playing in America? You said you went to Oklahoma. How was that experience for yeah. you? Um, I, I always bring this up when I speak to different people that have had a similar experience, but they, I always talk about how different it is for people that aren't American to go over and play college golf because I feel like in America, it's very, very competitive and the Americans are already quite well drilled and, and knowledgeable about that pressure of playing and dealing with media and stuff like that, that maybe we don't get in the UK or yourself might not have gotten in, in Sweden. So how, how did you find that experience? I mean, I think I got well prepared coming from the national team. Uh, mm -hmm. I got to travel a lot at a very young age and learn how to handle things on my own. And then all the structure of like how to practice and setting up everything, but then going over there, I mean, it was quite a challenge for me combining uh, education with golf. I struggled a bit with putting my focus because I've always been so focused on golf. And now I really had to work hard on my academics in order to play golf too. So. It was a bit of a challenge, but we had all the resources to get through with the academics as well. So it worked out pretty well, but it was, it was, a, it was a bit of a change in the beginning, but I think I adjusted pretty well. Um, it is a different culture too, um, mm -hmm. coming from Sweden and Europe where, and then going to the U.S. where things are a bit different. But I mean, I, I loved it. I enjoyed it. Uh, I do recommend uh, juniors to do it if they want, but um, yeah. And Oklahoma State, I mean, what can I say? The golf course there is, like there's a reason why I chose Oklahoma and mm -hmm. Oklahoma State, and that's because of the golf program. I, okay. for myself, I didn't want to be distracted by other things around me because I know that once I get home I can have fun and do all these things but once I'm there I want to focus on golf and academics and of course enjoy a bit of the college life well I was going to say you've got the college parties there so you have to you have to do well to yeah. not get distracted <laughs> <laughs> yeah you can still get distracted I guess. <laughs> you've got to let your hair down sometimes <laughs> No, it was, uh, it was great. And I mean, they developed so many great players there. So uh, it's always inspiring to go back there and be in that environment, really. Yeah. But so now I really enjoy being back in Europe. Yeah. So I was going to say before that, then, were you just playing kind of amateur tournaments around Sweden or were you already, you said you were traveling around a little bit? Where, where else were you playing in tournaments and stuff before you got into the college program? So with the national team, I traveled within Europe and then we also had tournaments in the U.S. as like AJGA tournaments. And I went to those and that's where the uh, recruiters, like all the college coaches came and watched us. So there are different junior tours where I played. Um, and so that's how I did it to okay. get into then college. Yeah, and then after college, you turned pro in 2018, wasn't it? That's correct. And, st yeah. and started so, to play on the on the LET. Yeah, so I did Q school for the LPJ, uh, the first stage, and missed by one stroke to the second stage. And then I felt like, okay, then I'm going to do the LET qualifier. And I did. And then ever since then, I've just stayed here on the uh, latest European tour. And I mean, now it's growing, and I'm loving it. So... And it's getting close to actually with the LPJ, so it's uh, I like yeah, this tour. Because you, yeah, you've been playing there for like two or three years, and you've also been on the the LET Access series as well, haven't you? So, 
how have you f- kind of found like your experience as well so far in these two or three years that you've been playing? How how do you feel about your game so far since you've been on tour? So it's been pretty interesting, like coming from junior golf and then going into like professional and doing everything on my own. Uh, I really feel like I've been going like like slowly upwards. Uh, mm-hmm. Since the first year, I had to combine the LET access and LET since I didn't have a full card. Uh, and great experience. Access tournaments were great, and they still are. And so I think that got me very prepared for the LET tour. And then mm-hmm. um, now I'm at the place where I worked a bit different this past year with COVID and going on and now I feel I'm I'm at a place where I'm really secure about my game I feel great in the environment on the LET and I'm starting to improve uh, quite a lot so now Good. gradually yeah. I'm, I'm getting where I want yeah we and we talked a little bit about this weekend you were supposed to play in the, the world invitational over in Northern Ireland so what happened there in the end and how come you decided not to to play in that event yeah, so I was on the reserve list and then I got in last week and I had already planned that I was going to play the Swedish match played this week. And after Finland, the week before in the LET, I felt a little strain in my hand and I said, OK, I'm going to rest these two weeks, maybe. And then I got in and then I tried to prepare everything for it and going through our, all the protocols. And it was just it was a bit bit of a stress and I felt like, okay, if I'm going to go, I want to feel a hundred percent. It costs a lot of money. Uh, But then I know I have my schedule for all the other tournaments. So I just decided, okay, I'm just going to back out of this one and make sure my body allows me to play a hundred percent. So that's why I decided to stay home. Yeah, well, I was going to mention that because you you told me that you were just going to rest and save yourself for the for Spain. So obviously, with the situation we've had over the last year or so with COVID, is that what you kind of do? Are you looking at the schedule and going right? I'm going to go to this one, not going to go to this. I mean, is that based off just COVID restrictions, or do you factor anything else into how you choose your schedule? Uh, no. Uh, I mean, yeah, actually, yeah. For one of the tournaments, I decided not to go. Um, I would, I didn't go to South Africa this year because of it. Mm-hmm. I, I, I felt like, cause my brother got really ill. He got put into hospital and with like health. So I just felt like that's a bit of a big risk for me. Uh, so that's why I decided to stay home for that tournament, but for the rest of them, no, uh, I, I decided I'm going to play all of them and, it's been a bit different, but I think we're we're doing well in handling things on the tour. We get tested before, we get tested during the week, exit tests, and then we stay in our bubbles. So everything is is safe, I think. Mm-hmm. And then I'm double vaccinated now, so I feel I feel pretty good about it. But we're still staying through like to the restrictions. Yeah, it's a little bit of a weird one at the moment. I've heard them talk about it in like the men's PGA game mm. about the fact that, you know, obviously all the fans are now coming back and we've got thousands and thousands of fans in, but yet the players are still obviously having to take all these restrict, um, you know, being like all these restrictions and being in all these bubbles and, and all that kind of stuff. I mean, right. what's it like for you guys while trying to play on tour? I mean, is it a little bit more uh, flexible now or are you still very much kind of, tied into a load of different restrictions no it definitely sucks to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, uh, I mean usually when I traveled before I've been able to like explore cities you know I like some of the players like to stay focused entirely on golf I've tried to keep a balance of like if I go to a place okay this is something I want to see or do if it's a restaurant or something now it's been where you place at one place and I mean I, I would say I stay more I I spend more time on the golf course because mm-hmm. I don't want to stay in the hotel for that long uh, but you manage I mean it's it's for the better it's for everyone's safety so you kind of you just get used to it and so but 
there's places in like hotels where you're just like, okay, I wish I was in a better hotel. Yeah. And I, I, outside of golf as well, then you, you seem like you're a little bit of a traveler anyway. I saw one of your, or a couple of your vlogging videos that you did on your YouTube channel. Um, I was very heartbroken okay. to see that. Yeah, I, I came across it and I was very heartbreaking <laughs> to, to find out that you that you went to a Liverpool game. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I went with uh, Daniel Aggers, his foundation, got invited to play a pro-am and then did yeah. that entire thing. And I'm not a big football fan, so I was like, <laughs> but that was fun. Yeah, no, it was good. Uh, Okay, well, so you're not. So, so, uh, <laughs> I was gonna say, are you decided? We, we can't. We can't convince you to change. You probably can. You probably can. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, Ibrahimovic used to play for Manchester United. You know, does that not? He's like the god there. See, in Sweden, I didn't isn't even he? know that. No, there you I go. I didn't even know that, but now I'm Manchester. So I'm, <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, that's great. And um, <laughs> talking about going back to golf, then um, you, you mentioned there that your next tournament is going to be in Spain, and you said you've already got a little bit of experience right. playing out in Spain. It it looks like you played quite a bit in Spain and in Portugal, I believe, as well. You you played a little bit. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. That's so great. I yeah. You, you pretty you feeling pretty confident then for that tournament? Is your game pretty suited to to that style of course, that kind of weather, or how do you feel about that tournament? Yeah, uh, it's at uh, La Reserva Soto Grande, uh, the tournament where it's hosted. I've played that course so many times. That's where I used to practice when I lived in Spain. Mm -hmm. um, great golf course, good challenge. If the if the wind comes in and picks up, I mean, it can get messy. But it's a mm -hmm. uh, uh, so now I feel good about my game too. So the only thing blocking me right now. It's like my smaller injuries. Mm -hmm. I just uh, uh, strained my foot uh, yesterday playing paddle. So now I just like went to see the doctor and I was like, okay, what do I do now? So I, I just need to rest even more. Last week it was mm -hmm. my wrist and now it's my foot. I mean, it's it was a dumb thing to do. Maybe to play paddle before a tournament, but I mean, yeah, it's part of life. A, yeah, yeah, you gotta have a little, <laughs> little bit of fun sometimes. I feel like I'm getting up in age now. I told my, my family that. I was like, maybe, maybe I am getting older. I thought it was like, no, nothing can happen to me. I've never broken a leg or anything. And now I'm just feeling like, ah, this is going on. And this sure. Yeah, it's definitely, definitely one of the first signs, isn't it? It is. <laughs> so how, how, do you, how do you manage a situation like that then where... For example, as you just mentioned there now, you've got to be a little bit careful with the injuries. How do you manage your kind of training schedule? Do you just try and do a little bit of light exercise? Are you, are you trying to play any golf at all? Or, or do you completely leave it until mm -hmm. until you feel good? It's a, I have a schedule uh, with set up with my physio. So I do my rehab. I have my, uh, like, I go to the gym four times a week. Mm -hmm. I have my programs I do when I travel because now we can't be in the gym. So if we had to like adjust it to that. Uh, and then beside of that, I try to do other activities. That's just normal fun, like paddle or, I mean, I go for walks or do something fun with my friends on top of that. Uh, but yeah, I do have a good setup with my uh, physio that I follow. Mm -hmm. And what, what sort of things do you do with your coach at the moment? Is there anything in particular that you work on with your coach in terms of your swing? Um, what sort of things do you normally do on a weekly basis, say, before a tournament? And so everything is pretty much like, it's more like I want to hit a draw. I've been mm -hmm. playing a fade most of my time in my life. Uh, and now I'm working on coming more on the inside with the club. Okay. Uh, but so now we're working in the gym of like moving my hip sideways. We're doing a lot of exercises for that. So my movement okay. like come in there. Um, so I work more in the gym than I do on the golf course. Actually, I try to minimize my time on the golf course just to get as much possible out of it. 
So rather than being at the golf course, working for four hours, like going around, I focus two hours and just doing really well. It makes sure mm-hmm. I follow my schedule. Um, so, I mean, it's the, the golf swing is not nothing natural for the body. So you kind of have to be aware of like how, how your body, body's feeling about it. Mm-hmm. So I try to just go off of that and make sure I'm, preventing anything for like injuries and such uh, sure. stretch a lot uh, do yoga uh, but I work a lot with my mental game that's where I put most of my focus yeah well I wanted to come back to that because you mentioned earlier about about your dad so what sort of things do you do on that side of the game and, and why is it important to you um I mean it's quite interesting he's a uh, he is a golf coach, as we spoke about. Uh, he, but he works a lot more, not in the techniques. He goes more into like state of mind, visualizing, okay. hearing the golf uh, shot, feeling it, going through all the senses. Uh, and that's how we work and create shots. And so when I practice, all I try to do is like go through all those like senses and apply it to the shot and that's pretty much how I do when I set up my um, like the course strategy for courses and like here I need to hit a draw Mm -hmm. and then I can stay like the night before and prepare that shot uh, in my head so that's more how I work with him and it's interesting and I think things like that are fun and also to do that on a daily basis like with life where do how do I want to wake up? So, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's a good, it's good. So, so you're actually saying you sometimes pre-plan shots before they've even happened. Do you, do you mean like I might get into this yeah. spot and I'm going to imagine how how I would play that shot if need be? Mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean, if it's like a hole where I'm like, okay, this is a place where I feel I don't feel a hundred percent. So that's mm-hmm. where we would go back and I would be like, okay. What do I need to do? So once I'm there, I've already played that hole so many times. In your so, mind. In that's, my mind. That's, I've seen that's, it, that's, I've heard it, and so. <laughs> I mean, no, I mean, that's kind of interesting because I could imagine that for, let's say, a, a, a good shot, like one off the fairway or maybe one where you've got to play a fade, etc. But do you do that even for possible bad shots then? Like, let's say, oh, if I get caught in this bunker, this is how I'm going to play the shot. Would you do that kind of thing as well? Yeah, uh, I mean... <laughs> I mean, the, the really reason... Like that, the, the, like, the, I'm the, going to be... Yeah, yeah, no. It's... it's uh, The reason it's I like say that I'm is getting, because it, yeah. if, it, if it was me, I'd then go and put that ball straight in the bunker because I'm thinking about it. <laughs> That's great. That you, pre- <laughs> you prepared the night before. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, but in the practice rounds, I play shots from the bunkers. And so, so I get a feeling of like the sand. And so, so I'm pretty sure. prepared for that. So, yeah. That's good. And have you got like a lot of <laughs> kind of pre-shot routines then? Are you somebody that's quite superstitious or do you, do you not kind of go that far with, with, with stuff? No, I mean, the only superstitious thing I've had before is like, I can't tie my shoes twice. Okay. It's like... <laughs> But now I've just like let things of that go. Yeah. So now I can actually do it. <laughs> okay. Um, but no, I don't know. Um, Where did that come from? I think it must have been like I played well uh, a tournament with only tying my shoes one time. And then the next time I tied my shoes twice and I played terrible. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was one of those things that happened. But now I worked work that away if you can say that <laughs> okay and um obviously you mentioned that you travel quite a bit and you've played you know quite a lot of of uh, in different countries what sort of style would you say that your game suits in, in terms of whether it's played in europe or played in different climates and countries what what sort of game do you do you prefer to play um, or style links links I interesting prefer links i love playing in scotland i'd like uh the surface there like it's a uh, that for me is the real golf. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I mean, I, I, I like everything, but that's what I prefer. 
I like yeah. shaping the ball. I like seeing it roll, like controlling things like that and around the greens and stuff. Um, using a nine iron or seven iron, or five iron to chip, like things like that are fun, I think. Um, so, but we don't get to play links that, that much. I, I wish we were, but no, so. Yeah, I mean, how, how many how many sort of events do they have on the on the schedule that's linked style then? I would I mean, say, at, at the for, oh, it's like British and we got Scottish, and this week in uh, Northern, Northern Ireland. Ireland. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not playing either one of them, so. Uh, <laughs> no I was going to gonna say this. I think there's two Scottish events coming up soon. Is there not in a in a few weeks or so? Back to back. Um. Well, that's, so. yeah, that's the British, yeah, that could be, but that's, uh, it's not on my schedule, unfortunately. Not on yours. Well, the, the mm. two that I did see that might be on yours are, there's two events in Sweden as well coming up soon, I believe. Are you going to be going to both of those? That's correct, yeah. No, that's the plan. I'm in uh, both of those, and then uh, I think we've got Switzerland, France, we got four weeks in a row there going on. And then we were a bit unsure about the schedule for uh, some of the following tournaments, but hopefully everything starts getting better and we mm -hmm. can add more to it. Uh, but yeah, so Sweden, that'll be fun. I mean, I, hopefully we can have a crowd and uh, some people coming to watch, but we'll, mm -hmm. we'll see what they say. Yeah, I mean, what, what's, the, what's the situation like there? Is it starting to open up again? I mean, or is it not likely for a while yet in terms of golf, I guess? uh yeah no sweden's been pretty pretty good from the start open. No? you know we, we're we, we yeah we haven't had it as like restricted as you guys no uh no lockdown no nothing more like you know we distance ourselves anyways <laughs> Swedes are a bit like we stay away from each other yeah. um no so in <laughs> terms of golf we uh everything's been going on as usual just no tournaments no crowd and so uh, which has been a bit sad. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hopefully then that the, they get some crowd. And you, you said there that, that before that you know your favorite style is kind of that link style. What's the the kind of golf style and golf like in general in in that part of the world in Sweden, Finland, Norway? And and do you like that style? Oh yeah, it's like what do you call it? park uh, tournament oh, courses? Yeah. yeah no, the, I I like the I like the grass around because we played last week in Finland. And mm -hmm. just knowing that I was going to play uh, on that type of grass. And so I, w I just felt excited about it. Yeah, well, I, 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 think, I think one of your best finishes in the LET was actually in Finland. I think you finished T19 in Finland. So I was going to say, does it just give you a little bit of confidence straight away, knowing that, well, you're comfortable on that style of course? Yeah. I mean, even the week before in London, uh, when we played the Aramco series, uh, mm. Even there, I felt like my game was getting stronger and I moved up in the field and then going into Finland, I just felt like, okay, I got, got my game. And the, the only thing that was saving me is like my short game. When my short game is 100%, that's when I feel like I can score. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so even now, just working on my short game, putting, that's a, I feel like that's one of the strongest part of my game right now. Yeah, well, actually, I, I kind of had a look, little look at this, and it does say that like your sand saves and your putting is two, or one of the two, uh, two of the best parts of your game. So um, you're definitely yeah. correct there. So why do you why do you think that is? I mean, you, it's funny because you just talked about the visualizing thing. Is that because you do you feel like but, it's part yeah, of that mental yeah. game? Yeah. Like you you put yourself in certain situations that you know how to get out of, and and you do it. Uh, I think it's yeah my the way I look at putting is like it's the easiest part of the game anyone can do it for me it's it the hardest it shouldn't be that hard <laughs> <laughs> well no in reality it shouldn't it's right it's just put the ball in the right. hole but <laughs> mm -hmm. for me it's really difficult it's, I don't, it's the worst part of my game <laughs> no so I think I think that's what it is like uh, the way I work with it it's really simple mm -hmm. uh, I just go through all the steps ever since I was, I have my way of working with it since I was younger and it's just simple. Uh, so so what's, what, sort of what sort of steps are they for you then? Is it a pre, is it like pre-round routine that you're doing or, or something else? 
it's the ball star going through like the the grounds like the fundamental part like checking my uh, the start of the ball uh my setup and uh, also like um green reading um and things like that so i just i'm the way i do with my putting is like i see a lot i visualize a lot and uh get a good feel for it are you one of these that's doing the whole view whatever they call it these days mm, no you're no. not a fan you're not a fan I'm of not. that i mean i don't know i haven't tried it but, and i'm probably not going to right now since my putting is okay yeah. at the moment <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was gonna say I'm, I'm, I'm sure that works but no not for me. Off, not, <laughs> don't change what works <laughs> I so, get um, pretty frustrated when I see them stepping around like this. And I'm like, okay, my line. <laughs> no. Well, they they fine. say they they say that you can feel kind of like where the hill's going, right, or where the slope is. But I I can't. I guess yeah. I guess. I, yeah. Yeah. See, I haven't tried anything. I try. I try to see things. Well, I mean, unless it's like a a massive slope. I mean, it's. I don't know right. how they do it. I don't know how they do it, but it's interesting. <laughs> So apart, apart from that side of your game, then what, I mean, that's the kind of stronger part of your game. Then. So what would you feel like is maybe kind of the weaker part if you've got an ear that, that you're maybe not so comfortable with as, as the sand saving and putting, et cetera? Um, I think um, at the moment is my irons. Uh, okay. Or my driver. It could be one of those. Uh but I feel like I'm getting there now with it. Uh, as I said, I'm trying to uh, hit a draw now. Um, I'm working with that. Like hitting the draw is not the problem. It's more like actually aiming more to the right in mm -hmm. order for the ball to like come in with the draw to the hole. Sure. And, um, and so I've struggled a little bit with that. But uh, I mean, no, nothing too serious yeah so when did you start yeah. to make those changes then and was was there any reason why you wanted to start trying to, to try to hit that kind of shot yeah i i wanted to uh get more length and then mm -hmm. also my miss to the right was pretty big i just felt like okay, okay i want to do something different and i mean also for my body we went through this with my my physio we said okay for in order for me to actually stay like completely healthy with my body it would be more mm. natural to come on this way so that's the reason why that was pretty interesting then so was it like a particular weakness that you had in the body though or just something that you preferred to do in terms of the movement no i mean i started like going with my coach we checked things like gradually i was like okay i want to go over to this and then then now i just decided like it's going to happen. It's going to be a draw that I'm going to play with. Uh, mm. But I'm going to say, I, if I were to like decide, I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to hit a straight shot. Yeah. And then my miss is going to be this much. So sure. I can create a draw. And so, uh, but yeah, I try to not make it too complicated. Yeah. When I talk just, about a draw, it's not like a big one. It's like no, oh, no, <laughs> little baby one. No, it's just interesting that you like trying to change the swing, isn't it? Because a lot of people would say whatever your natural swing or or shape shot is, like try and stick with that, right? And don't make that kind of transition. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's pretty interesting to hear, like you know, why you did that. Yeah. No, yeah. I mean, and with my irons, it's not that I'm like I have to hit a draw with them. Uh, it's more mm. the driver, I would say. I want to hit a, yeah. a draw with my driver. I want to get that length with the driver, and then with the with the irons, I want to be able to create shots. Um, yeah, I mean, since since you've started on tour, then a few years ago, has there been a massive increase in in how far or how long some of these women are on on the tour? Have you noticed quite a big difference? Um, no, not really, because I see players out there that hit it not as far as everyone else and mm -hmm. still managed to score really well sure. uh, so i mean there are some players out there that hit it really really far and do really yep. well uh, but it's not always about that it's about mm. score strategy and like what are you like your misses minimizing them sure. um 
So that's interesting because it just feels like on the men's, it's always kind of a conversation at the moment. And I know, I think it was on the LPGA recently, they were, I don't want to say bad mouth in it, but they were talking about how some of the par fives should be reachable on the second shot for the women's game on the LPGA, because a lot of it was all layup territory. And they were saying that it was like a little bit boring for the television. They wanted the women to be able to, to go for it more in two, like they do in the men's game. So I'm not sure if there was, if it's like that on the LET at the moment, or if it's a little bit different. Um, I think it depends on the courses we play. Like some mm -hmm. of them we can reach uh, if you hit a good drive. Some of them I, I kind of have to lay up. Uh, mm -hmm. So it doesn't really matter. No, I think it's pretty, I mean, I think they do it pretty well in setting up the courses uh, on the LET. Yeah. As far as I know, um, in the courses I've played, so no. Yeah, I think I think it's just maybe the the men they're not as smart as the women are they so it's just like we're just gonna hit it hit it really far on the second right. one and we don't no. care where it goes where the women are probably <laughs> more strategic so we'll lay up and get a better score. <laughs> yeah, could be, could be. <laughs> well, well, listen, Isabella, I'll I'll let you go. Um, but it's been really great talking to you. And well, obviously you're not playing Thank this weekend you, now, too. but hopefully we'll, we'll see you out in Spain and uh, tell everybody where they can find you on, on social media for anybody that wants to check you out. Yeah, it's just Isabella Daylert, my first name and last name, all in one. And that's uh, for Instagram, Twitter. Now you said YouTube, I don't YouTube. Well, I, much, I was, uh... was going to say, are we going <laughs> to see you carry on this vlog? Or I was, I've got into I watched the intro. No, and it, no. I, I didn't. I didn't understand a word of it because it was all in Swedish. But I was pretty <laughs> gripped. <laughs> and then well, I saw maybe the... I should do it in English now. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> I saw the football game. You went to the Peru game as well. No, Peru versus Sweden, and then yeah, yeah. Saw you. I saw you at the Liverpool That's game. Right. I was. I was pretty hooked on the vlog. But there's only three episodes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Maybe I'll pick it up again. <laughs> awesome. Right. Well, thank okay. you very much, Isabella. I really appreciate your time. Great to speak to you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.